A lot of US dollar funding is extended by non-US banks. These dollars that say French, Japanese or Mexican banks lend out have to come from somewhere. In this article, we map where the 12.8 trillion of US dollar funding is coming from. We look at two geographical dimensions. The first is booking location or where the funds are recorded. The most natural place to raise dollars is in the US itself. But the headquarters of non-US banks also play an important role. So do offices in other locations such as offshore financial centers. The second related but distinct dimension is where do the dollars actually come from? A residence in Germany could be depositing US dollars with a bank in Germany. That would be local funding. But a US residence could also be depositing dollars with this bank in Germany. That would be cross-border funding. Since the crisis, non-US banks are raising relatively less of the dollar funding via their branches and subsidiaries in the United States, as the red line is showing. At the same time, these banks are booking more of their dollar funding in their home jurisdictions. For instance, a Canadian bank booking more liabilities in Canada, a Japanese bank in Japan, and so on. We document that a full half of non-US banks dollar borrowing is coming from cross-border transactions. An implication of this, for instance, is that US residents remain an important source of dollar funding for these banks, despite the reduced role of the US operations of non-US banks. The high cross-border share of dollar funding and the reduced role of the United States as a booking location highlight the importance of stable cross-border funding. Cross-border flows, regardless of the source, can be fickle in a crisis, as the events of 2007 and 2008 showed. This highlights also the importance of policy tools that can backstop dollar liquidity in the event of a funding squeeze, such as central bank swap lines.